In this video, I give you a quick walkthrough of Serato Sample. Find out more coming up. Thank you for watching P.TV where you find tips, tricks, and tutorials for DJs and music performers. Now let's get into the video. So when you load Serato Sample into your DAW of choice, you're greeted with this screen. Basically, all you have to do is load any audio file. It can be a loop all the way up to a full MP3. In this case, I went ahead and prepped a loop. We'll open that up. And you'll see that automatically, from the top to bottom, let's start right here. From the top right, you can see that the BPM matches the BPM in your DAW. Now, although this BPM will match what's in the DAW, Serato a sample actually still analyzes the file the way you would do it in Serato DJ and gets the BPM of the track or whatever file that you load to it as well as gets the key information right here. So as you can see, I have my key information. I do have the BPM of this track, which is 105. And although the actual BPM of this loop is 105, watch if I go ahead and change the BPM here, the BPM also changes in Serato sample as well. You can also turn that off by hitting the sync button and then that'll turn sync off and you can see the actual BPM of the loop or whatever audio file you have loaded so it'll still run at its original BPM. But let's just go ahead and turn sync back on, change the BPM back down. Right here you have your key and detune, which basically does the same thing as Serato Pitch and Time does, where you're able to pitch up and down the sample while maintaining the same timing. So for instance, if I go ahead and just play this sample, right, in its original key, now I can change the key. right and so on and so forth on top of actual key you can go ahead and detune it by sense as well so if you're taking say for example this little this little airy symbol sound right here if you loop that up you can actually detune it and tune it and loop it up and make it an actual kind of instrument but we'll get into that a little later right here you have the eject button that just basically removes this sample and lets you load any other sample here you have the information of whatever sample you have playing. And then you have two play modes. These are the same kind of play modes that you see in the Serato Sampler in Serato DJ. So you have the hold mode right here where you actually have to hold down the button to keep the, keep the sample playing. And then you have the regular playthrough mode right here, which will play it all the way through. And then you have your play button right here. Moving down here, you have your actual sample. So just like in Serato DJ, you can zoom in and zoom out as you see fit. And then you have your waveform the big one and then the overview right here. Now this bottom section here is where Serato Sample gets interesting. Right here is where you have control over your different slices of your sample and then right here is your actual pads that you can break down your sample into. So in Serato Sample you can break down whatever um, audio file you have loaded into 16 different parts. Just like in Serato DJ when you launch the slicer you can break it up into eight pads. With Serato Sample, you can actually break it up into 16. But unlike Serato Sample, there's actually more modes than that. So right here in the bottom right is where you can pick which mode you want to break up your sample or audio file into. So there's four modes. First, we have Find Sample. So if I click on that, it'll go ahead and break up the actual audio file into transient slices uh, to the best of its ability. Notice right here, it just picked the biggest peak. So Right now it's just broken up into kicks and it picked up one of the snares as well. So I can go ahead and play this as well through the keyboard on my Mac or if you have a MIDI controller plugged in you can do that as well. So. so you can find samples that way. Go ahead and clear that. The next mode is the slicer. This is basically pretty much the same as the slicer in Serato DJ. So it'll start slicing from wherever you have your marker at. So right now I've it's set at the very first kick drum. And then right here you can actually pick the time division that you want the slicer to hit. So right now I'll have it make a slice at every one beat. Then go ahead and click that one more time. And notice it just goes ahead and breaks it up just like that. If I clear that again. If I do it on every, say, half beat, there you go. So,
breaks it up really, really tight for, for a drum loop like this. Again, I can just clear it all right here. After that, we have set random, which will just go through random points in the audio file and place cue points. This makes more sense when you're just loading in like a full MP3 of a song and you're just kind of, you know, maybe just experimenting or trying to find parts. I can go ahead and set random and notice it just randomly to just select the different points. And then after that, you have the key shift pad, which is not actually not enabled right now. But let's go back to, um, for this example, let's just do find samples. And now notice it has the four markers or five cue point markers right there. Now let's go through the actual things that you can do with each cue point. So right now, if I have it on this hold mode, I actually have to hold down the key like I mentioned earlier for the sample to play. If I hit the regular playthrough mode, it's just gonna go ahead and play through until I stop it or until I hit another sample. So for instance, Now, those are pretty cool, and it's nice that you can do that, but there's actually more power hidden beneath that as well. So if you look at these cue point markers, you see these triangles at the top and bottom. This top one is the start point, this bottom one is the end point. So you can actually drag this out, for example, and then now, if I'm in regular playthrough mode, it'll stop right at the end of the, the cue point, but it'll still play all the way through it. And when I switch to this mode right here, the hold mode, it's still the same thing. I still have to hold it down, but no matter how long I hold it down, it'll still end at the end of the cue point, which is nice. So I can see myself using this in the regular playthrough mode and just letting all the chops kind of play through. Now below that, you can actually edit each chop or each cue point individually. So you have your level right here, which is basically your volume. You have uh, two-pole two filter, which can go up and down. Sort of like the filter on uh, Serato DJ or any of the Pioneer mixers. Now you have your attack and your release. So if you're familiar with working in a DAR, making beats or synthesis, attack basically means the time it takes for the sample to reach its full volume. So for instance, at a zero attack, sample starts right away. If I push this up, so you get kind of like a pulling in effect. And, the, uh, and on the other end of that, we have the release right here, which basically is how fast the sample will start fading out. So for example, if I pull this up a little, And the longer I have this release up, the longer the sample will be, all the way to the end, where it'll play all the way through. But if I move it, let's say around here, get a nice clean fade out. Or if I don't want to if I don't want to hear this part of the sample right here, I can kind of shorten it up. As well as those, we can actually go ahead and time stretch and key shift each individual slice as well. So right here was the global uh, key shift. Right here is individual slice key shift. So if I go ahead and pull this up, and even though this is pitched down, if I go to the next slice, it's still the normal key. So this is cool because you can actually layer different chops on top of each other and have them set differently. So let me show you that. I'll go ahead and clear that out. I'll go ahead and create my own uh, cue points using this keyboard. So if you want, if you don't want to use this mode and you just want to chop up your sample manually, you can use these keys right here. So for example, I'll go ahead and start right here, hit A. You can either click on the actual window or hit the note on your keyboard or your MIDI keyboard. And let's go ahead and just pull that out right here. Go ahead and hit the next one. Pull that out. And then what I'll do is that I'll actually, I'll actually overlap them. So same sample, but if I 
go ahead and select A first, pitches down. So not only can you key shift each one individually, you can still mess with all these other features right here. So I can go ahead and So you get full control over each individual slice of these 16 slices. So there's a lot of power there. So not only can you chop up each piece of the audio file in 16 parts, you can actually overlap and treat each slice differently and get different kind of um, sounding slices of the exact same part of audio all within this one VST. So you don't have to have multiple instances to get multiple versions or multiple affected different parts of the sample, which is really cool. Something that... I think is kind of missing in a lot of these other sampler sequencer kind of plugins or even in Ableton Live where you have to have multiple um, actual audio files running at the same time to get the same piece of audio treated differently unless you're running into auxes and it's way more complicated. This is really straightforward and really simple. I'm glad to see it. So that's a look at the basic features of Serato Sample. Really cool sample based plugin for your DAW from Ableton Live to Machina to Logic. It works in a lot of the mainstream DAWs and right now it's really cool because it's still on that open beta. Um, you still get a nice free trial. This will be a paid plugin later on so if you're interested in it and you want to see what it can do definitely go download it right now. I'm going to get more in depth in another video about this uh, plugin and where I could see this being useful for production and for DJing so be on the lookout for that. But if you're a beat maker or you're a Serato user and you're just interested in seeing what this may or may not be able to add to your sets. Definitely check it out, especially right now since it's free and you can get that trial. Just go ahead to the Serato website, sign up for that beta. You should be able to get that link right away. So once again, the Serato sample. So that's a quick walkthrough of Serato samples. So question of the day, is Serato sample something you're interested in using? Go ahead and leave that down in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. And as always, if you find this video useful, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, go ahead and click on subscribe right there. Or if you'd like to see more content, go ahead and click on that video right there. And thank you for watching P.TV, where you'll find tips, tricks, and tutorials for DJs and music performers. See you next time.